It seems a cruel twist of fate, but depression reinforces itself. The very behaviours that could help to alleviate the symptoms of the disease feel unachievable for those who actually have it. Depression reduces motivation, which can decrease our activity levels. And then that lack of activity can exacerbate the symptoms of depression. It becomes a nasty feedback loop that perpetuates itself. And one of the cognitive mechanisms at the heart of depression is so-called learned helplessness. This is the belief that you have basically no control over the outcome of an event. It makes effort seem futile because the belief is that even if you try, you're not going to get a result. With all of this combined, it can be extremely frustrating for a depressed person to continuously hear the advice that they should be doing exercise. I can absolutely empathize with that. Nevertheless, it's still important that we try to cultivate a sense of agency in depression. We tend to see one of two polarized perspectives about this online. We have one camp of people talking about the difficulty of motivation in depression, saying that it's near impossible for people who have depression to engage in these behaviors. They often use the analogy that you wouldn't tell somebody with a broken leg to walk to work. On the other side of the fence, we see people talking about the benefits of things like exercise and good sleep without the acknowledgement of how difficult that can be for depressed people to do. My perspective is that we can and should acknowledge that difficulty with empathy without dropping the discussion entirely. Let's not forget that one of the key cognitive mechanisms of depression is this learned helplessness. Messaging like you wouldn't tell somebody with a broken leg to walk to work reinforces that learned helplessness, in my opinion. The reality is that things like exercise can have a profound influence on alleviating symptoms of depression and improving quality of life. Join me for part two, where I'll talk about the biological mechanisms of exercise and depression. People who have depression are often told that exercise can help. In part one, we deconstructed why that's not as simple as it sounds, given that depression directly affects motivation. In this video, I'm going to unpack the mechanisms of exercise and depression, hopefully making a case for keeping the discussion going, even though I appreciate it's a very hard sell if you're struggling to motivate yourself. My hope is that by understanding the mechanisms, you might be empowered with just a small modicum of motivation to at least think about starting the process. Thing number one is that exercise can regulate the production and release of key neurotransmitters in mood and motivation. In this case, sometimes action has to precede motivation and not the other way around. Simply getting started and being consistent for a week or so can help to stimulate that motivation and it will get easier over time. Thing number two, the exercise stimulates the production and release of BDNF or brain derived neurotrophic factor. This is a key protein in the brain that supports the survival and growth of brain cells. And it's thought that many antidepressant medications function at least partially by increasing levels of BDNF in the brain. Thing number three, which I'm sure you will heard, exercise releases endorphins. These are like the body's natural painkillers and mood elevators. Thing number four, regulation of stress and all the stress machinery in the brain and body. Chronic stress is a major contributor to depression and the symptoms of depression. And through exercise, we can not only reduce acutely your levels of stress or stress hormones in the body, but also correct some of the damage that chronic stress can cause over time. Under normal physiological conditions, there are receptors in the brain that act like a stop sign for the stress response after it's fulfilled its duty, let's say. But sometimes we see in the brains of depressed people that this no longer functions. Those receptors are so desensitized from chronic stress that they stop functioning. And now you have a stress response that is left unchecked and it becomes a feedback loop. Exercise can help to repair this feedback loop so that you have that stop sign in place again. Thing number five is that exercise can lead to structural and functional differences in your brain. One example is that consistent exercise over time can increase the size of the hippocampus. This is a structure that plays an important role in memory and learning, but it's also implicated heavily in depression. Last but certainly not least, exercise has anti-inflammatory effects. There's growing evidence that inflammation in the brain plays a role in depressive symptoms, particularly actually in the hippocampus, which I just mentioned. 